Welcome everyone. My name is Diane Dahoney. I'm the Community Service Librarian at the Paul Sawyer Public Library. And on behalf of the library, we are so glad to have you here joining us tonight. Um, this is a virtual tour of the Frankfurt Cemetery, and I'm sure that you're very glad to be on a virtual tour instead of an actual tour tonight because it is very nasty weather out there. So um, you're going to get to see everything um, with sunshine and, and all clear and no rain, safe and comfortable from your own home. So that, that's nice. But always keep in mind um, that they uh, do offer tours at the cemetery, and I'm sure Patty is going to tell you about those and um, how you can go on an actual tour later on in the presentation. So as I said, um, tonight we have uh, a virtual walking tour, a virtual tour of the Frankfurt Cemetery. Um, glad to present our speaker. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. That is Miss Patty Peefler. She is the president of the Frankfurt Cemetery Board. And she's an expert on all things Frankfurt Cemetery. And um, when we were getting ready to do this program, we were trying to figure out the best way that we could offer it to you in a virtual format, uh, since the library is not offering in-person programming yet. And we decided that the best way to do it, to make sure we had good weather and we, we hit all the high points and, and we were able to present it to you in a way that you could learn the most, enjoy it, have fun, and still ask questions would be to do um, a video ahead of time and Andrew Tippett was so very kind um, to help Patty um, in recording this video and we have four different little sections that we're going to show. I'm going to share my screen so you'll be able to view it um, just on this Zoom but in between those sections um, Patty's going to talk to you a little bit and answer your questions. Um, so do be thinking as uh, as you listen to her presentation, um, and I hope everybody will have some good questions and good discussion here tonight. So um, before I turn it over to Patty, uh, if you haven't yet muted your um, your microphone, if you would go ahead and do that for me, and we will go ahead and get started. Welcome, Patty. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I'm actually glad to be sitting on my couch. <laughs> um, I hope that you will enjoy what what Andy and I did, and I hope that you will have lots of questions because we probably have uh, a, we'll have a lot of dead air time if you don't have any questions. So don't be bashful. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start the first section of the presentation if you're ready. I'm ready. All right. And once I start this, um, you all let me know if you can't hear it. Um, we want to make sure we have the volume set correctly. I cannot hear it. There's no volume at all. Okay, we're going to work on the sound here. Sometimes when you share a video, it acts up on us. So let me just get the sound set. Could any of you all hear the sound on the video? No? Okay. No. No. 
Okay, I think we've got it now. Let's try this again. Just give me a thumbs up if you've got it. Good evening. I'm Patty Peevler, and I would like to welcome you to the very historic, very beautiful Frankfurt Cemetery. The cemetery itself was founded by an act of the legislature in 1844, and the first people buried here were Daniel Boone and Rebecca Boone. Now, the gentleman that planned the cemetery decided that they needed a celebrity uh, dead person to uh, encourage people to be buried here. There had been two other cemeteries at least in Frankfurt before that. So they uh, went to Missouri, received permission from Boone relatives and brought uh, Rebecca and uh, Daniel up the river and uh, they had the biggest funeral Frankfurt has ever seen. About 20,000 people came and uh, there weren't nearly 20,000 people living in Frankfurt at that time. I'd like to start out by telling you that uh, our chapel, which is um, on the National Register of Historic Places, is sort of the centerpiece for, of, the, of, the, of the cemetery, and it is uh, currently undergoing some renovations. It um, was renovated very extensively in the 1970s, uh, but as you know, that's been a while. The first people that I'd like to tell you about in this area are E.H. Taylor and his family, who are buried very close to uh, the chapel. E.H. Taylor is considered the father of modern distilling. He his um, distillery is now called Buffalo Trace, but it was called Old Fire Copper and Carlisle and several other names. At one time, there were 12 distilleries in Frankfurt, so distilling has always been very important. After E.H. Taylor and his family coming down the hill, you'll see the largest monument in the cemetery. It is dedicated to the Alexander family. The Alexanders are the fathers of thoroughbred racing in Kentucky. Alexander Alexander and Robert Atchison Alexander were the owners of uh, Lexington, the first superstar racehorse. They were um, <clears throat> first in Frankfurt when they came to Kentucky and so chose to be buried here even though uh, their farms are in Woodford County and they are on both sides of uh, Old Frankfurt Pike. Uh, one is called Woodburn and the other is, is Ashford Stud. And they uh, are now owned by a descendant of the, dis of the Alexanders, um, Governor and Mrs. Jones. Uh, Libby Jones' mother was Lucy Alexander. So they have been really big players in, in thoroughbred racing for many, many years. Now, I'm sitting on a wall that used to look at a very beautiful pond. But one day, the pond lost its water and has never filled back up again. And we just now call it the bowl. But anyway, I have seen pictures of it. It was very beautiful. When the cemetery was first started, it was envisioned that there would be... Um, in-ground vaults all around on this hill. Uh, unfortunately, only one was built, and that is the one that we uh, see, and it is, uh, unfortunately, has had some problems. It was very beautiful. Uh, there were, it was, it was marble-faced, and it had some um, uh, angels and um, Somewhere along the line, the front fell over and the angels were, were, were crushed. The Tribune lot is the largest uh, single family lot 
in the cemetery. The Tereus lived at Weehawken, which is a home off of uh, Country Lane, which is still going strong. It's a very beautiful house. As we go up the hill, uh, you will see Charles Moorhead's and, and some of his family. Charles Moorhead was one of two governors of Kentucky that were named Moorhead. But Charles Moorhead had a large uh, plantation in Greenville, Mississippi, and that is where he died. But by uh, an act of the legislature who wanted all the governors they could have buried here, he, was, he and his family are buried here. Just beyond them um, is Robert Burns Wilson. And Robert Burns Wilson is the um, author of a very famous poem which became the rallying cry for the Spanish-American War. You will recall that maybe uh, Spanish forces um, bombed the Maine, which was a battleship in Havana Harbor. And they, um, uh, Americans, of course, were outraged. And Robert Burns Wilson wrote a poem called Remember the Maine. And Remember the Maine became the rallying cry for that for that uh, particular war. Now, Robert Burns Wilson was also a, a quite accomplished um, watercolorist, and the, well, the Capital City Museum, which I was, I was trying to think of how to say that it will shortly reopen after a lot of uh, a renovation, has uh, a wonderful exhibit of Robert Burns Wilson pictures. Just beyond Robert Burns Wilson is a small monument to a man called Ellison Williams. Ellison Williams was a contemporary of Daniel Boone's. And when he heard that Boone was being reburied in Frankfurt, he walked, some say barefoot, I doubt it, he walked from Covington to be one of the pallbearers. And the, the legislature thought that someone who was that loyal and had been a friend of Boone's and was one of the pioneers of Kentucky should be buried in this cemetery. So he, Ellison Williams is right up there um, in the trees right beyond Boone. Now we're going, going to move our location so that we can uh, give some time to Daniel Boone and the people that are buried just a little bit uh, around him. Okay. I anyway. have something to say. <laughs> I made two mistakes and I want to correct them. The second farm that uh, Governor Jones and, and Libby Jones own is Airdrie Stud, not Ashford Stud, although there is an Ashford Stud. Now, the other thing is Ellison's name was Ellison Williamson. And I have called him twice, Ellison Williams. So I apologize for getting my tongue twisted. All right. Does anybody have any questions on the for, on the introduction, or any of um, the items or the locations that we've seen so far? I, I have a comment. In 1844, for 20,000 people to have come to Frankfurt, that was really a whole lot of people wasn't how did I, I so can't imagine. There, there were military units bands uh dignitaries in in uh, carriages um and it it was i understand a warm day but they trudged up the hill and 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 put him uh put put daniel and rebecca in in um lovely spot I think now I will say that the monument was not uh, put up to them for several years mm -hmm. but but Frank I, I wondered how they all ate and how they all slept and everything but they they tell me it was 20,000 I don't know thank you <laughs> Penny I have a question about the pond is that yes. uh, it's Jane break here did uh, did that just dry up all by itself they never knew what happened to it what when, uh, when was no, that? Jane, it drained um 
the cemetery is very rocky. Unfortunately, the gentleman who who found that spot and bought it from the Dudleys they had no idea how rocky it was. Our guys are lucky now they have uh, powered uh, equipment, but you know, the, a long time ago, they had to dig through that rock by picks and things. What happened, we think, because um, on, on, on the precipice, all of that, we think, drains down to the river. And, and one day it, it didn't dry up, it just left. And, I, and I'm wondering, because you noticed that the Tribune uh, vault, uh, the front fell over and all of that. Sometimes Frankfurt has very mild, but earth tremors. And I'm wondering if that may be what happened. Um, you would think that when we have a great big rain that the pond would fill up again, but it doesn't. What year was that when it drained itself? Uh, well, it was sometime after uh, photography was was invented. I would, I think, early nineteen hundreds. It's a shame. Somebody suggested that we should put a liner down there and fill it up again, and I'm I'm sure that's just the big insurance liability that we need. Did anyone else have a question or a comment on the first section? Okay, if nobody uh, does at the moment, if you will mute yourself again, we I will go ahead and share my screen and we will start on the second section. Located and now we are at the I guess I would call it the centerpiece of the cemetery even though it is on the Located and now we are at the I guess I would call it the centerpiece of the cemetery even though it is on the cliff overlooking downtown Frankfurt when Daniel and Rebecca Boone were buried here, as I told you earlier, they were the first people buried here. Um, it was some time before a monument was raised to them. Part of the stone in the monument was, was uh, quarried near uh, Boonesboro, which of course Boone is famous for founding. There are four panels on the 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 monument. Three of them are devoted to Boone. One he's tackling a Native American. One he's do, uh, doing something else. But the one that I like the best is the only one of Rebecca and she is milking a cow. Now Rebecca died uh, several years before uh, Daniel and of course there is some controversy and always has been that Daniel may not have been the grave that they dug up. I personally feel like if he's not uh, here physically, he must surely be here emotionally and uh, spiritually. Um, near Robert Burns Wilson and Elson Williams, I forgot to mention a very important man who's who's buried so that he can look out over the valley, and that is Robert Carmichael. Robert Carmichael came from Scotland to design this uh, cemetery, and Frankfurt Cemetery is the second uh, garden cemetery uh, incorporated in the United States. The first one is called Mount Aubrey. Auburn, and it is uh, in the Boston area, and Mason Brown, who was one of the people who uh, was on the committee to start this cemetery, had gone up there, and it was just such a relaxing, beautiful place that he uh, told the members of the committee about uh, how he thought that this cemetery should be uh, made. So Robert Carmichael did the, the winding um, 
roads and uh, the mounds, and it it is he. I think he very much succeeded. This is a beautiful place. Um, we can see North Frankfurt, South Frankfurt, all the way out to West Frankfurt. And let me tell you that this peaceful, very peaceful cemetery was not always so peaceful. During the Civil War, um, the Confederates uh, rode through here and the uh, men stationed on uh, Fort Hill uh, fired at them. And uh, I don't I, I don't know if they ruined any stones, but I'm pretty sure they must have. Uh, Daniel's monument was wrecked pretty much by souvenir hunters from um, uh, Civil War soldiers, anybody who came up here. And after the Civil War, it, it was just in pretty bad shape for a number of years until the DAR persuaded um, the state government to uh, redo it and it is an exact copy of the uh, way it used to be but uh, now we have a nice fence so that you can see it but you can't touch it now I also while we're here want to point out that the oldest part of the cemetery is in front is is that way and the uh, Browns of Liberty Hall are down that way uh, the Crittenden's, you remember John J. Crittenden, the Crittenden Compromise. He was a very active politician in both national and state politics. His family is down there. And one of the, of the stones there is in memory of his grandson, John J. Crittenden III, who fell at the Little Bighorn with Custer and is buried at the battlefield. But they wanted to memorialize him here. Now, John J. Crittenden had the distinct, I don't know, I'll say honor, of having two sons who were generals in the Civil War. One was a Confederate and one was a Union. And so when we talk about a house divided, his house really was divided. But John J. Crittenden is, was right up there with any of the uh, famous like Henry Clay and those folks that uh, really helped our, our nation along. And, and he and his wife are buried here and, and a number of their sons, uh, including the two Civil War generals. Now we're going to um, make a little trip over to the State Mound, which uh, is, is a very interesting uh, part of the cemetery. But before we get to the State Mound, we'll take a look at Paul Sawyer and we'll also take a look at the grave of Elizabeth Love. Elizabeth Love was the first woman buried in the Frankfurt Cemetery. She was the owner uh, along with her husband Major Love of what's called was called the Love Tavern and before the state capitol was built uh, on Broadway the legislature met at the Love Tavern. It's very a very famous um, lodging place for people who came to Frankfurt. And Elizabeth Love and Margaretta Mason Brown from Liberty Hall uh, started the first Sunday school for children uh, west of the Allegheny Mountains. So those ladies had a lot to do with the cultural uh, aspects of Frankfurt. Now, Paul Sawyer will see his gravestone. Paul um, died in Flashman, New York, but several years later, his cousin uh, insisted that he be brought back here to the place that he lived the longest in his life and also the place that he truly loved. When Paul uh, was in Kentucky, his paintings were by and large almost all um, watercolors, but when he moved to New York, he, he switched to oils. He thought they were more, um, I guess I'll use the word classy. I'm not sure. But of course, here in Frankfurt, we all love Paul Sawyer's beautiful paintings of Elkhorn Creek and the river and uh, Frankfurt. So we're going to take a little move now to the, uh, to the state, what's called the state mound. I, I was going to say that Elizabeth Love's stone uh, is one of the, of course, is the oldest um, 
small stone there. And over the years it had gotten broken and our uh, crew uh, put it back together. But you see that you can, you can tell that it, it was on the ground for quite a while and they have uh, cemented it and also put a uh, wire or some kind of uh, something around it. Um, those early stones uh, pit very badly. They get moss and things on them. And a lot of times you can't uh, even tell the names, but the only thing that you can do is to take warm water and a soft brush. If you start putting chemicals on them, then you're going to hurt the stone. Does anybody have a question or a comment? I do. Um, that is intriguing to me. <laughs> uh, what you were just saying about the care of the stones. It, so is the cemetery staff then responsible for caring for all the stones or just those more historical ones? How does that work? Um, the stones belong to the descendants, the family of the uh -huh. person buried there. And we would not uh, do anything to any stones unless we were uh, got permission. Now, Elizabeth Love, I traced her family to Texas, but was, was not able to find a living relative. So we decided that because she is a historic figure that we should write her stone. And, and our, our crew did that, but uh, the stones don't belong to us and were you know were we to to do anything drastic uh that the family you know might not like it is a shame that people like elizabeth love don't have any relatives anywhere near here and so there she is uh kind okay. of you know but um the, we do encourage people to clean the family stones, but we do not do it. Sure, thank you, that's interesting. Does anyone else have a question right now? I do, is the cemetery still active? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Is the cemetery still active? Active as in burying people? Yes. Yes, we had uh, uh, we had had a three uh, burials last week. We average sometimes uh, we had six on one day of uh, last year. We have uh, enough space, um, probably, to bury people until uh, twenty about twenty sixty, and of course. More people are being cremated and you can get more cremains in a spot than you can a full body burial. But yes, we are active. We are a 501-313 uh, nonprofit. We were incorporated by the legislature and a board of trustees runs the cemetery. Uh, we uh, receive no state, city, federal funds and so sometimes uh, our budget is very lean because we have um, a lot of grass to cut up there and we have a lot of equipment to take care of but yes very active and um, I can tell you that uh, more than 23,000 people are already there and they would like very much for anybody that would like to come and join them to, to be there it is a beautiful space spot if I do say so myself. Um, I'm not sure if, if you know, you probably know, but your homeowner insurance covers the monuments. Please so say that again. Your homeowner insurance will cover any damage to a monument. Really? Even, even one for your forebears? What you need to do, what the family needs to do is keep track of their homeowner insurance, pass it down to subsequent families. Not every insurance carrier will go back 
but some will. That's a wonderful uh, idea, and I and I sincerely hope people will take take uh, advantage of that because uh, the monuments are are very expensive. Yes, I found that out when I went to a cemetery and a beautiful uh, monument had been cut in half from a tree in a storm. Yes. So I was to ask, and I was told that your homeowner insurance policy covers. And I thought to myself, sure. You know, and I, I, I thought they were just trying to get me off the phone. But when I told my, my insurance carrier, and it was not my tombstone, my family's tombstone, I was told that that was correct. So, well, I think that's wonderful. And you have certainly enlightened us on that. Um, last year, the Frankfurt Cemetery lost nine trees. So you know some of those trees are going to inadvertently fall on somebody's tombstone. I'll, I'll do one little advertisement. My homeowner insurer, insurer is the Hartford Insurance Group. And they're the ones that told me, yes, that mine was covered. And to make sure, and then I wouldn't have my daughter pay for part of my husband. Just to make sure there was a trail. I noticed um, someone had typed something. It, it went rather quickly across the top of my screen and I did not get all of it. I can read it to you, Patty. Okay, thank um, you. Lisa asks, um, uh, well, she says that the reason for the Confederate attack on the cemetery was the rumor of munitions hidden inside the cemetery. Can you confirm that? <laughs> there were no uh, munitions hidden in the cemetery. However, there were quite a few munitions in the state arsenal, which um, at the time, the way that you got into the cemetery, because of course most people walked, uh, was on a path that ran beside the arsenal. So that would have been an easy way for uh, anybody trying to get to the arsenal to uh, just come right through the cemetery. Also, the main road, uh, and I'm sorry that I did not uh, point this out, but near where uh, Ellison Williamson and uh, Robert Burns Wilson are, there is a, a, a spot where you can still see, there's several spots, in the cemetery where you can still see the road, which which was the road that took you out to Glens Creek and, and on to uh, Versailles and that way. So it wasn't um, the little, you know, sleepy path that uh, it is now. Uh, Patty, is, is the uh, cost of all the plots the same or do you have to pay more for a view? No, it is not, it is not the same, Anna. Uh, or, or is this Jane? Jane is Jane. No, we have, we have um, de depending on the sections, and you are right, the views and, and that kind of thing, there are about, um, I think there's about five different tiers. Now, don't ask me to quote them, but um, they, uh, the ones uh, over by Glens Creek, are, are are the least expensive and then of course there there are possibly a few um in in this in the area near Boone and those are of course the most expensive are but there a lot have, of families are there a lot of families in Frankfurt that have family plots there now we have families that are living now that yes, have yes family there plots. Are, in, fact, um, in fact I had a, a email conversation with a young man today who uh, tells me that the lots that his family has were were bought by a great grandfather and then parceled out to the different uh, sons. And one son uh, ended up in Florida and he's not going to be buried here. So we will um, make an attempt to uh, pass, pass those graves on to uh, the it, the way it passes is if if your father bought the graves, then when when he passes, it goes to the 
the oldest child. And we do have a lot of people who, uh, there may be one or two uh, graves uh, left from a great grandfather or something like that. So yes, uh, um, some families will have uh, eight or 10. Um, and of course we, we always like it. It's so much better when somebody knows where they're gonna be buried other than, you know, someone dies, it's 10 below and they've got to be buried and that we, you know, they've got to buy a lot. So it's, you know, it's really something to think about. One of the things, and I will, this is a blatant um, advertisement. Uh, we take payments and we have no interest. So you could buy two lots and pay 50 or a hundred dollars a month until you got them paid for. Of course, no one can be buried there until they are paid for, and there cannot be a stone put up until they're buried, uh, until they're paid for. But, you know, no interest takes several years to pay, and you've got that out of the way, and your family doesn't have to be trudging around trying to find a place to plant you. Good question, thank you. I think I missed at the beginning, what year was the cemetery started? Uh, the legislature incorporated the cemetery in 1844. Daniel and Rebecca Boone, the first people buried there were buried in 1845. Uh, Elizabeth Love, first, first woman buried there was, was uh, very early in uh, 1846. Okay, so did they establish the cemetery because they needed another cemetery? You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, there, there was a private cemetery. Out, it's it, it's actually the best way to see it is off of Daly Avenue, and uh, it it was just a lady started letting people be buried there and. You know, they were taking up all of her land and finally her family said pretty much enough. We're, we're not going to let anybody else be buried there. Now, when the transportation building was was being uh, erected, they did find a very extensive cemetery there. And the, those people are now uh, interred together uh, up on Fort Hill. But there had been at least two uh, cemeteries uh, in, in Frankfurt proper. However, lots of churches in the country had cemeteries and uh, sometimes uh, there, are, there are lots of family cemeteries on different farms around Franklin County. Thank you. All right, any other questions right now or are we ready to move on to the next part? We are in the, uh, what I would say is the most hallowed ground of this cemetery. It was deeded from the cemetery to the state of Kentucky as a place where honored dead from all wars could be um, buried. The beautiful, wonderful uh, obelisk that uh, crowns this mound it's mostly called the state mound. Uh, this was uh, commissioned by the legislature and was mostly carved in Italy. It was designed by Robert Larnitz, who was a German, uh, no, excuse me, Russian immigrant, uh, but he became the preeminent uh, designer of public monuments. Uh, it is crowned with a, a statue of, of victory, and on the sides of it are various battles, 
and under those various battles are the names of the officers who fell there. Now, one of the um, Mexican War dead, and that is really the reason, the Mexican War is really the reason for the impetus to, to get this, uh, this monument going. Um, one of them that died uh, there was Lieutenant Colonel Henry Clay, Jr. And Henry Clay, uh, Jr. Was, um, w was shot in the legs and could not move. And uh, five of his men um, rushed out to try to save him. And they were carrying him from the battlefield. This is the Battle of Buena Vista. They were carrying him off as best they could when they were all hit by a shell and all but one were killed. So Henry and, and some of his fellow officers were the first people buried, buried here. John J. Crittenden gave the uh, speech when the when the uh, dedication happened and since then um, dead from every war have been put here um, you may remember what's called the river raisin massacre it was during the war of 1812 and many many kentuckians fought in the war of 1812 it happened uh, in michigan and it was uh, called the battle of the river raisin but uh, it, it ended in many Kentuckians, any, many soldiers being captured. And the British let the Indians, the Native Americans, excuse me, let the Native Americans, um, even though they promised not to hurt the, the wounded and the, the, the soldiers, they were slaughtered. And... Many men from Franklin County were among the dead. Uh, they were buried uh, sometime later, and then even later, it was suggested that they should come back and be buried here. So they are buried here, but unfortunately, we do not know where. Um, under this uh, sidewalk, when it was being uh, thought out, uh, no one, I guess, remembered. And so, unfortunately, uh, five graves from Civil War era soldiers were covered up by the, um, by, by the, the black, not the blacktop, it's a, I guess I'd call it a clay tile. Anyway, they um, later, um, the University of Kentucky did an archaeological dig here and found uh, the remains of these five uh, Civil War men and, uh, of course, moved them to uh, a more advantageous location. Four of those men were um, buried in uh, metal coffins, which was the new... I guess the the new coffin of the time, and only one was buried in um, a wooden coffin. But they were able to see um, buttons and things, and so I recently read about that. It's on the internet, and um, if if you would like to read more about it, I, I found it really fascinating. One of the uh, most lovely monuments here is right behind me and it is the monument to Richard Minter Johnson who was vice president under Van Buren. Now Richard Minter Johnson um, has uh, an improbable claim to fame. He may have been the uh, killer of Tecumseh in battle. Tecumseh led the Native Americans um, he believed that they should get uh, get together and uh, uh, be one unit to uh, see if they couldn't run run the the um, European invaders out. Anyway, Richard Minner Johnson, there's his picture. Uh, however, on the other side of him is a picture of him uh, killing Tecumseh, but his face is gone. And it, 
evidently can't be fixed. This is another of uh, Robert Lawrence's. Um, I think you say that Lawrence. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, this is another one of his uh, designs. And, of course, it has the eagle on the top uh, representing the United States. And also, one thing which I would like to point out to you is a lot of older monuments have uh, scarves on them. And that is uh, from a long time ago when caskets were not adorned with flags or uh, flowers. They were there were cloths, uh, often very uh, ornate cloths put over them, and they're called palls. And if the family of the deceased was uh, rather wealthy, they would have their own pall, uh, usually with the family crest or, or something like that on it. If you were not so fortunate, you could rent them, I think, from the church. But anyway, you will see when you come up here a lot of of scarves, um, and that is the meaning of, of that. It's called the pall, or another time it's called, and I'm not sure that I'm pronouncing this correctly, the moat. I think it's M-O-T-E, but I'm not sure. Okay, now I want to tell you about the man in front of me whose name is Theodore O'Hara. Now, Theodore O'Hara was um, a young, when he was a young man, he was a newspaper man. He was quite good with words, and he um, was in the Mexican War and, and stayed in, in Mexico for several years. But Theodore O'Hara is best known for a poem which he wrote called The Bivouac of the Dead. And it refers to the dead of the Mexican-American War. And Theodore O'Hara uh, would be proud, I hope, to know that every school child in the Franklin County system at least a long time ago when I was in the fifth grade, um, was required to memorize the poem. And it, and it is very lovely. And the uh, part of the poem is on uh, this monument here. But I will also say that this poem, at least part of it, is at every federal cemetery uh, in the United States where soldiers are buried. So he... Um, he, he got his due for his poem, Bivouac of the Dead. This is the newer section of the state, of the state mound, and it has beside me um, vignettes of, of every war that the United States has fought, and looks like to me there's been a lot. On the other uh, monuments, there is inscribed the names of every person who is from Kentucky who has died in any war. So there they are. They're just row after row after row. Now, I want to say more about uh, someone uh, that is quite famous. Uh, you re if you remember the Marine hymn, From the Halls of Montezuma to the Shores of Tripoli, um, that is because of a young man who is buried at the bay, at, at, down at the bottom of the state mound. His name was Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon, not O'Banion, but O'Bannon. And the, there actually has been a ship named for him. Um, O'Bannon was a, a Marine sent with a number of, of Marines and naval uh, ships to the Mediterranean where they fought a group of brigands called the Barbary Pirates. And the Barbary Pirates were interfering with American shipping and taking uh, prisoners and taking goods, and they had to be stopped. So they um, fought them and won. And Presley O'Bannon is the first person to plant the American flag on, on foreign soil. And he is buried here. He uh, is not from Frankfurt, but uh, as one of the honored dead of Kentucky, he was chosen to be reinterred here. He had been uh, buried in Shelby County. There is um, 
at least one person from every war here and they are all they are all Kentucky. That's the end of the third part. Did anyone have any questions or comments? When you come to the cemetery, do you have a guide that lets you walk through to take a tour on your own? Or do you, or do you have a uh, guided tours no we you you can um go on your own we have um two brochures one tells of uh, of the prominent people who are buried there and the other one is a map that shows you where other more prominent people are buried uh, in the past uh, russ hatter had done some tours on sunday but he has gotten too old and I'm about as old as he is. So, uh, but if you if you would like to know more about the cemetery or have a tour of a specific area, I would be glad to do that for you. Thank you. I was told that the, um, I, I don't think we'd call him the king, but the head man in Tripoli was so thrilled that with the Americans that they were able to um, defeat the Barbary pirates that he gave, gave several of the officers scimitar swords as a thank you. And I was told that some uh, Marines still have the scimitar sword as part of their dress uniform. I don't know if that's true or not, not ever having been in the Marines, but anyway, that's what I was told. Very good, thanks, Patty. If nobody else has a comment or a question right now. Um, Gail, did you have a question? No, I was just adjusting my, um, okay. I didn't have another one. <laughs> well, I, actually I do. <laughs> Do you have the two names of the two generals of Crittenden? Uh, what was it, John Jay? Um, uh, one of them is, uh, his middle name is Li Lionatus, uh, and I can't, but I, I can't remember, but I'll tell you what, while uh, the fourth part is going, I'll get out my cemetery book and I'll tell you what their names were. Great, thank okay? you. Okay. Right. If we don't have any other questions right now, I will start the last section. This is an especially pretty part of the cemetery. Behind me is a wonderful cross with vines coming up of it, off of it. It's very um, detailed. And at the top, it says mother. It has her, her birth date and her death date, but unfortunately, it does not tell her name. Um, to my left, there is a is a, a, a pink granite stone. Um, this is the Nickel family lot, and Robert Nickel was the second superintendent of the cemetery. He also came from Scotland, as did his wife. And um, there there are uh, lots of Nickel tombstones all along here in a row. One of them I thought was interesting. Uh, William Nickel. At the bottom of his tombstone, it has, he had the first garage in Frankfurt, 1908 to 1938. And I think that was interesting because, of course, the automobile was new and I guess he uh, was the first one to take care of it. Um, this area uh, has 
some uh, very prominent people in Frankfurt. Uh, to the left is a pink granite uh, obelisk. It is for the Tubman family. Uh, well, it's for Emily Tubman. Her family was the Thomases. Her father is one of the people who died before this cemetery was uh, thought of, but he, he, like many others, was moved here. Emily, Tom, Emily Thomas Tubman uh, lived half the year in uh, Augusta, Georgia, and half the year in Frankfurt. She was married to a quite wealthy uh, man who had a lot of interest in railroads, and Mr. Tubman died and left Emily in charge of his very vast estate. Emily is known as a philanthropist, and she is uh, also, uh, me particularly and others who go to the First Christian Church, always praise her name because we had a fire at our church, and of course it was shortly after the Civil War, and there was not uh, a lot of money to be had, and she uh, had our uh, present sanctuary built, and of course it is beautiful. Her brother, Landon Thomas, was a, 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 a prominent a lawyer, and he uh, gave the uh, stained glass windows in our church uh, as, as a memorial to Emily. But Emily didn't care for stained glass, so this was not done until after she had passed. Uh, also in this section are the Macklins, the Souths, and the Trumbulls, and they all... Uh, had large farms uh, at the Forks of Elkhorn, very prominent citizens. Uh, the Macklins had, uh, were fortunate enough, they had a downtown house, and they also had an in-the-country house. So um, they are here. And uh, also, one thing that I find interesting, there's a very small obelisk uh, down, that, down that way a little bit. And it is uh, honoring the life of the um, three-year-old son of of the um, the family, and it's the only metal uh, monument in the cemetery. Now, beyond that, I would highly recommend that you go over in section F. That is the Catholic section, and for a while it belonged to the Catholic Church, but they deeded it back to the cemetery. The, a lot of the monuments over there are really beautiful. They were carved by Richard Lynch, who was uh, an Irish immigrant, and of course he knew all the Celtic uh, knots and uh, vines, and they're, they're all very beautiful, uh, calla lilies, all these things that are carved on them. Um, one thing that you'll notice when you are, are walking through there, many of the people came from Ireland, and they wanted you to know that. So they'll say a native of County Cork or, or whatever. And I think that's so touching because they knew they would never get to go back. But, of course, they wanted to uh, remember where they came from. Now, also behind me, um, over to the left, to my left, is our chapel, which is undergoing its third restoration. We are almost finished. We have had electricity, um, a heating and air conditioning put into it, a new roof. Uh, it has been painted inside, and we are now uh, in the process of redoing some of the boards on the outside, which were um, uh, rotting. We have had uh, what's called Yankee gutters put on it, uh, which were original to the to the building. The building has had uh, interesting life until 1932. It was a place where people had funerals, but somewhere along the line, it fell into disrepair and it became the maintenance shop. And so all of the mowers and scythes and all those things were kept in there. And it was not until the 70s that the Garden Club of Frankfurt, with the help of Governor Carroll's Contingency Fund, did quite an extensive uh, renovation of it. One unfortunate thing happened when the stained glass windows, which I understand were very beautiful, were taken out um, to be cleaned and fixed. 
uh, when they were brought back, they were stacked and they were stolen. And of course, they were never recovered. So it now has what's called art glass. And I think it's a very pretty and very restful place. You could have um, a funeral there on a warm or a cold day. Uh, we, we have had Chautauqua performances there. We have had prayer meetings. So, uh, and it is certainly for rent. If you have a group that would like to use our chapel, we'd be happy to accommodate you. The last thing I want to say is that um, the, the Frankfurt Cemetery is not out of graves. We have, we figure, somebody smarter than me figured, we have uh, openings, lots, until at least 2060. Now, I won't be around then, so uh, somebody else will have to sell them to you, but um, we, we are often uh, hear people say, oh, you don't have any space left. Well, yes, we do. And we would be happy for you to be here. It's often been called the Westminster Abbey of Kentucky. And I certainly think when you come up here, you will see, see why 17 governors, Richard Minner Johnson, uh, Simon Bolivar Buckner, the um, highest ranking officer to be killed in World War II, who's a general, um, the famous and, and uh, not so famous uh, Civil War soldiers are here. It's just a beautiful place to come and uh, I hope that you have enjoyed seeing just a teeny weeny bit of the cemetery. Thank you. Patty, I believe you're muted. You never want to be muted. There you um, go. The two, the two Crittenden gentlemen are George Bibb Crittenden and Thomas Lyonatus Crittenden. Now, let me say something about Bibb. One of the stones that's very near Elizabeth Love is... Um, John, I can't remember his first name. Anyway, Mr. Bibb, who uh, invented bib lettuce in his uh, garden. And so when you're out there seeing Elizabeth Love and those folks, you can also see the bib, bib lettuce man. Um, and then just further down on, on that mound is, uh, well, it's not really a mound, a uh, row are where the Crittendons are. Questions? I think they all went to sleep. I want to thank you. I have really enjoyed this. And I, I do have one comment. I was listening to NPR today. And they said a lot of cemeteries are now putting in uh, solar panels because there are fewer burials than uh, they anticipated. So they're court, you know, taking section of it and uh, using it for climate change. But I, I just was so surprised when I heard that. But uh, that was NPR this afternoon. Well, I'm sorry I missed that. Uh, we, we have um, a, a lot of land right in the front that uh, we can certainly um, use. Well, we could probably put some solar panels there. <laughs> I hadn't <laughs> thought of that. What a good idea. There's a, uh, a big... Uh, Catholic Cemetery in Torrington, Kentucky, I mean, Connecticut, that already has the uh, panels up. Well, that's a great, that's an interesting idea. Thank you. Anyone else have a question or a comment? This has been wonderful. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm so Thanks, glad. Katie. Thank you. We appreciate Very it. Very interesting. Oh, you're welcome, Anna. You're welcome, Jane. Yep. Thank you, Patty. Well, Joanne. We, we Hello. <laughs> you were quiet. <laughs> I had been. Can you believe it? <laughs> no. 
No, thank you very much. It was wonderful. Well, I got those plugs in for the First Christian Church, you noticed. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> well, we appreciate you all joining us tonight so very much. Um, I know I've learned a lot. Um, wh what a, a wonderful way to spend a rainy evening. Um, I, I neglected to mention it at the start, but our theme for some reading this year is hometown adventures. And we're really trying to focus on um, just the wonderful um, treasures uh, that we have right here in Frankfurt, you know, right here in our backyard. Um, you don't have to travel far. You don't have to pack your bags. There's there's so many things as we're starting to get out more. There's so many things right here in our own community um, that a lot of people um, don't know about or haven't experienced before. And we're just trying to shine a light on those things this summer and really get people um out and in the community and involved and um and learning uh, so we appreciate you joining us tonight we hope that you'll check out our um our, our facebook page and then also our website which is www.pspl.org we have all of our programs listed on both of those locations and we do have programming for all ages so there's really something for everybody um, but thank you all so very much for joining us. Thank you, Patty, um, and to the Cemetery Board um, for sharing your time and your knowledge with us. And a big thank you to Andy Tippett for his beautiful videography. I, I was just so pleased with that. It was gorgeous. Um, and uh, if nobody else has any comments, then I will wish you all a good night. And we hope that we see you um, at another uh, virtual event soon and and hopefully before before we know it we'll, we'll all be back together so all right thank you all and you have a wonderful evening thank you patty you're welcome <laughs>